sixth grade lesson 13.4 is measures of variability and measures of variability is a single value that's used to describe how spread out the set of data is um, or are so so trying to figure out how spread out does the data run that might sound really really familiar to you because we just talked about something about how spread out data might be in the MAD the mean absolute deviation and so the reason that sounds familiar to you is because MAD is one measure of variability. So we'll review MAD, practice again. It's probably good to practice it again. Um, and then we'll learn about two other measures of variability. And don't worry, these are already ones you know. It's just now attaching the name to it. So it'll be just a quick review on those as well. I think you'll do really well on this lesson. Let's have a look at MAD again with the steps. Uh, the mean absolute deviation um, with the steps involved. I'll put the steps down so we can review them um, and we'll practice one together. Okay, so there's the three steps and it makes it look all nice and easy, right? But as you well know, there's a lot to each of these steps. Step one is to find the mean of all the data sets. And we do that by adding all of the data together and dividing by how many pieces of data there are. So that's kind of time consuming by itself. Step two is find the deviations from the mean. So each piece of data We'll find the difference between that and the mean that we found. And step three, once we have found all the deviations, we find the mean of those, which means we add them all up and divide by how many there are. And that gives us the mean absolute deviation. So it looks like simple steps. And it's not the calculations, as you well know, it's not the calculations that are difficult. It's just a time consuming sort of a thing. So let's look at the unlock the problem and do this together. Okay, so we have in gym class, the students recorded how far they could jump. The data set below gives the distances in inches that Manuel jumped. What is the mean absolute deviation, the MAD, of the data set? So step one, we will find the mean of the data set. That means we're adding everything together, 54, plus 58, every, that we did a 54 inch, 58 inch, 56 inch, 59 inch, 60 inch, and a 55 inch. We add those together and then we will divide by one, two, three, four, five, six, because there's six items in the data set. Okay, and when those were all added together, that was 342 divided by six. Six goes into 34 five times, that gives me 30. Four left over, bring down the two. Six goes into 42 seven times. So my mean of the whole data set is 57. Oh, they wanted me to fill this out. Okay, you can fill that out on your page. 342 divided by six is 57. Step two was to find how far they all deviated. The deviation, the, the how far away from the mean of 57 each of these pieces of data are. So you could see they just did the subtraction here. Um, 57 minus 54 is 3. 58 minus 57, notice they uh, they swapped that around. 57 can be swapped around because remember, we're talking absolute value, just a distance away, doesn't matter which direction. So it's okay. I know you're normally not comfortable switching around because subtraction is not commutative, but in this case, we're allowed to. It's an absolute value. 58 minus 57 is 1. 57 minus 56 for this data set or data piece is 1. The 59 minus the mean of 57 is 2. The 60 minus the 57 is 3. And the 57 minus the 55 is 2. Luckily, it's easy subtraction. They're usually fairly close to the mean. Then step three is that we will, uh, well, step three and four we've been doing together. We find the mean of the deviation. So these are all of our deviations. So add those together. Three plus one is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There were six data in the set. So 12 divided by six is two. So the mean absolute deviation, the average amount that any of those numbers spread away from the middle, of the mean of 57 is about two. Mean absolute deviation of the data is two. So it's not too spread out. I mean, it could have been worse if he jumped really terribly once and then really far once, but it's not too, it's pretty close. 
um, is what we find. So if we're talking about measure of variability, the variability on this is around two-ish uh, is what the variability, how much it varies by. Another way to get a measure of variability is to use the range. And you've done range before. That's just taking the largest number and subtracting from it the smallest number. So we would take 60 minus 54. I'll do it this way, actually. And that's going to give me 6. So the range from here to there is 6. So that's another measure of variability is how big the range is. Now we know the measure of variability on the MAD for that same set of numbers, because this was the same numbers from the previous page. It, that's a bigger variation. It's a different measurement anyways, a different variation than our MAD, but our MAD was kind of seeing how closely grouped, how far they are from middle, from mean. And finally, the third way, and we'll see an example of these both in a minute, the third measure of variability is the interquartile range. And that is familiar sounding, I'm sure. You might have kind of forgotten what, what it was again, and that's okay. Um, that's off of those box plots, right? And remember, box plots were all about medians. They're all about medians. So we have these in order. We're gonna find out what is the median. It's between 56 and 58. The number that's right between 56 and 58 is 57. That's our mean. Now, what is the mean of the lower half? I'm sorry, not the mean, the median. The median, 57 is our median. Now, what is the median of our lower half? It is 55. And what is the median of our upper half? It is 59. And so I go ahead and mark those and make a box. This is my upper quartile, this is my lower quartile, and my whiskers are simply lowest data piece and highest data piece. Refreshing memory, right? The interquartile range is the range of the box. So the range, regular range, was the range of the whole data set, 60 minus 54. The interquartile range is the range of the box. So you take the upper quartile of 59, and you subtract from it the lower quartile of 55, and the interquartile range is 4. That is another form of measure of variability. So our three ways to measure variability are the MAD, which makes us mad to have to calculate it, the range of the whole data set, largest to smallest, and the interquartile range of the main data set, uh, the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. So those are the three ways to do measures of variability. Let's look at that last example in your book. Okay, this example, use the range and the interquartile range to compare the data sets. The box plot shows the price in dollars of the handheld game that she's playing, uh, players at two different electronic stores. Find the range and interquartile range for each data set. Then compare the variability of the prices of the handheld game players at the two stores. Okay, so let's look at store A first. They want us to calculate the range. Remember that is the largest value and subtract from it the smallest value right here. So 150 minus 24 is going to be 126. That is the range. And since we're looking at range, let's go ahead and look at the range on store B. The largest number, 120, minus the smallest value, which is 30. And 120 minus 30 is 90. So the range for store A is 126. That data is really spread out. And for store B, it's not as spread out as store A. It doesn't cover as much ground. And you can see that visually, right? This is a longer than that. So sometimes, so you can really see it visually too. Now let's talk about that interquartile range, IQR, interquartile range. We can see this is a much shorter interquartile range than this. This has a very spread out interquartile range. Let's go ahead and do the math. We have the upper quartile of 72, which is what they put here, minus the lower quartile of 48. And we calculate that to get 24. And on this one, 
upper quartile range of 100 minus the lower quartile range of 42, which gives us 58. And we knew that this was going to be a higher number than this one because we could see this was more spread out than this one. So the interquartile range for store A is 24, and the interquartile range for store B is 58. Store A has a greater range, right? We were saying this has a greater range than this one, but store B has a greater interquartile range. You can just put IQR for interquartile range. That's the abbreviation for it. So now what does that actually mean? Like why, why do I need to know? What does that mean? It really means that while you might have had some outlier stuff going on or the spread out, it's not, it's really spread out. There's only a few this way, but the majority of the information, the majority of the data is really bunched together. So most of their data was in here. These guys where they didn't spread out quite as much all the way across, their main data was still also spread out too. So if you were looking for something that was a bit more accurate, I would say this one is more accurate data in here because you're super bunched together here. And then just maybe a few outliers out this way, but most of your data is really bunched together. And so you're getting a better picture of, uh, of what a normal amount is. You can make a better prediction with that information. So measures of variability. You can do the MAD, you can do the range, or you do the interquartile range. Those are three different ways that you can find the measure of variability on data. Go get it.